Welcome to another video guys. Don't forget to subscribe share and like the video. Here's the video guys, it's Super Soldiers. I think some of you might find this very interesting. I wanted to do this one just to kind of lighten up with the conspiracies I've been making lately. They've been offending people like... So anyways, I will see you at the end of the video. And uh, yeah, that's it. Let's start off with this. Last year, more than 7 million viewers watched in horror as two women threw themselves into the path of oncoming traffic. They survived, but the footage you're about to see is shocking and extraordinary. Yes. The other one, she's gonna run it. Oh no! Mike Alpha, Mike Alpha, we need ambulance, senior officers to the scene, we've got two possible fatals. To see that in front of you, it's traumatic for any person. Incredibly, the women then turn on the officers who are trying to help them. It's shock, it's horror, disbelief. What we couldn't show at the time is how this extraordinary story then took an even more grotesque turn. The motorway was insignificant compared to what she went on to do. Just 24 hours after being released, one of the women was on the run once again, fleeing from a house where a man with stab wounds fights for his life. This is just one hell of a twist on an already bizarre story. The cameraman is concentrating on the officers. He could never have anticipated what is about to happen behind them. I'm not a doctor. She has been knocked down. Is she the one that speaks English? Or the other one? The other one? She's going to run Oh, no! Bitch! Oh, Jesus! Seconds later, the other woman also runs into traffic. Mike Alpha, Mike Alpha, we need ambulance, senior officers to the scene, we've got two possible fatals. Isn't it interesting that these ladies couldn't weigh more than 130 pounds, get hit by multiple cars and nothing happens to either one? Not even a drop of blood came out of either one yet they were fighting like nothing happened to them. Could this be the rise of the super soldiers? And tonight, we have an exclusive interview for you with Sergeant Daniel Brad McBolan, the third. Former military special forces, defense contractor turned whistleblower, Brad uses the term to describe himself as a product of the military industrial complex because as far back as he remembers, Mr. McBolan has been programmed, tortured, and groomed as a super soldier. Created by a sixth generation of MK Ultra programming techniques, Brad has quite the life testimony. Be prepared for a mind bending presentation into the unknown, weaving a global system of control behind the scenes. I ask if you would walk us through the beginning. You know, let's go back to when you first started realizing that you were a part of this, you know, experiment or program. I would say at about six months of age, I uh, remember being very tender-hearted, very, uh, I wouldn't say shy, I was very outgoing, uh, even at that early of a time, but I remember um, a dysfunctional family as far back as being six months old, strolling around in a walker. You know, uh, they had these little things on wheels, you know, and you put the baby in there and they stroll around, you know, kind of learning how to walk, I guess. And uh, I have memories as far back as that, um, becoming very attracted to certain musical instruments. Um, and But mostly dysfunction, um, you know, dysfunctional family, which that's, they choose these people for a reason. But I do realize that I'm genetically connected to the female, the host, who carried me. I was actually uh, genetically, um, I mean, back in those days, they would actually take the woman who was going to carry the child, they would take her ovum, and then, of course, the father is who knows what or who. 
um, and they mix and match, splice and cut, and um, get a product, and then they re-implant that into the womb and uh, basically inject a type of uh, genetic filter between the blood so that um, because it, it makes the female very sick. If uh, any blood gets across the, the placenta, it can actually kill the host. But somehow my blood was poisoned. I mean, I tried to donate blood and I was rejected. I stopped after the fifth time. Is because, it negative uh, blood? No, uh, no, no, uh, A positive. But the, the, the thing is, is that uh, whenever they, they would look at my social security number and then they would say, oh, we have to do a test on you. And it's like, why do you have to do a test? I said, you're a four. Well, what's a four? And it happened to be the first digit of my social. Um, since then, I found that all fours are pretty much along the same lines. Um, they're all soldiers of some type. Not all of them are genetically enhanced or, or a product. Not all of them are, but that's what the soldiers are. Most of them are fours that um, have to do with um, combat, mutual combat situations. Who then is doing this? Tens of thousands of victims of this MPD have come forward in these last 30 years. They have remembered the stories of who did this and the who did this to them is sobering. Inside each victim are personalities who know what they have been through and do remember some of the perpetrators. They tell the stories of military, psychiatrists, doctors, labs, bases, covens, programming and so much more. Why are they doing this? This is the million dollar question and the answers will cause some to look away and pretend it just can't be. From some of the other books but mainly from my work directly with many victims the sexual mental, emotional and physical abuse is only part of the process. The reason for it all is, if it were possible, even more sinister. The splitting to create sub-personalities includes programming those sub-personalities to be assassins, bombers, killers, infiltrators, spies and eventually troops of the Neurich. They say they are the coming chaos makers etc. From the 1960s to the mid 90s the US government spent millions of dollars training psychic soldiers. In a series of secret programs these psychics tried to become the world's most dangerous spies. At the height of the Cold War US analysts learned the Soviets were interested in psychokinesis, telepathy and remote viewing. The US set up its own research programs built on earlier work from the Stanford Research Institute. Several agencies and universities conducted these operations, including the Department of Defense and Duke University. In 1995, the CIA abruptly terminated the project. They said it didn't work. So why spend 20 years on it? Why did the CIA take over the project and close it? What exactly were these people doing? Here's where it gets crazy. It did work, or at least some important people thought it did. They were willing to try almost anything. In Virginia, the spies kept a herd of de-bleated goats. When the would-be psychics weren't trying to walk through walls, they tried to kill goats with their minds. The operatives were trained to acquire Jedi-like superpowers, the ability to kill with a thought, read minds, and predict the future. Reports on their success vary. The statements of veterans and the official records do not match. According to the official records, the programs focused on remote viewing, an exercise where a psychic focuses on coordinates or a photograph and concentrates on perceiving details of the target. The results were surprising. Analysts found the program to be accurate between 20 to 35 percent of the time. Now we move on to more interesting things. Altered, we need to begin to examine this because they're showing you the truth hidden in plain sight. This is a real government project. The government is in, is trying right now to develop a super soldier. Um, so they sh and, and they have been for a long time. This isn't just uh, an operation that's begun recently. This is a very old operation and that's what the movie's showing you, that this stuff comes all the way back from after World War II. Yeah, that's when we adopted this, this method and this training here in America. Um, so they show you this metamorphosis that he goes through in the first one um, and they also show you the power that is used to transform him from a nobody into a super satanic soldier. Now what we see here is how it is satanic. It's obviously satanic people wake up. 
Now, in the first one, he go uh, Red Skull goes up to this mural, obviously a symbol of the Tree of Life, and he walks up to it and finds a snake. And he conveniently says, the Guardian of Wisdom, as you see the snake, and in Luciferianism, they believe that the serpent brought enlightenment to Eve and Adam in the garden and set them free by giving them the enlightenment that they needed to become gods. So this isn't just pure coincidence that the power that was used to uh, transform the super soldier Captain America is found in a mural after pressing a snake eye. You know, then you get the power that they then use to create the super soldier. Now, why is it a light that's shining out? Because they believe that Lucifer brings enlightenment. The very name Lucifer means light bearer, he who brings the light. Now, the Bible very clearly says that those who follow Lucifer have mistaken darkness for light and light for darkness. So they've completely inverted good and, and evil. Um, but that is why they're symbolizing this light here. And remember, this is the light that is used to create Captain America. A light that was found after pressing a snake eye that is wrapped around the roots of a tree. Come on, people, they're obviously telling you what's going on here. Um, he even goes on to say that a lot of people think that this stuff is superstition, but he knows it's science. Because the occult Illuminati satanic cabal is into ancient mysteries and ancient uh, knowledge. That is what they withhold within the mystery schools is this knowledge and they believe it brings them enlightenment. So this is obviously symbolized here. Another thing that uh, obviously shows us that this is the Illuminati's agenda, they even talk about Project Paperclip in the, in the, in the new one. Uh, I, I caught this little screenshot, German scientists recruited by the US. This was a real program. Oper uh, operation Paperclip was in fact a declassified government operation. After World War II, the US government brought over Nazi scientists. So the Nazis didn't lose, they moved to America. And in fact, the movie, The Winter Soldier, is showing us this truth hidden in plain sight. It's showing you the inner cult of Nazi Germany, this Illuminati cult in Germany, how they were then brought over here to continue in their occult studies and practices. And that is exactly what happened to Captain America. A Nazi scientist took the Luciferian light from, from Hydra that he got, uh, the, the skull got, the, got, the red skull got from that tree and then modifies Captain America with the Luciferian light, creating the world's first satanically altered super soldier right before everyone's eyes in the form of a movie so that everyone's desensitized to the fact that this is a real government program that is occurring. Um, and there you have it, here he is. So the creation of the first satanically altered super soldier, Captain America. Now in the, uh, the new one, you actually are introduced to another super soldier. Uh, one of the scenes where you see him, like he starts off really in the movie, obviously this is just a pentagram, a satanic pentagram, on the transhumanist arm. Uh, researcher Fritz Springmeier. I'm gonna leave that in the description section for you to check out. The MK Ultra program is in fact a mind control program. It's a real declassified government program. The CIA wanted to see how to create a completely undetectable, total controlled slave. The government application, or the military application of that is what we see with like Born. Born is another movie where they're hiding their super soldier program in plain sight. Now remember in Born, he doesn't remember who he is? Now that is very important because that shows evidence that the super soldiers are under MK Ultra mind control. And in fact, the Winter Soldier reaffirms that reality. Um, as you can see here, they go through trauma-based mind control. So there's trauma that's imposed on the individual till they psychologically break down. Uh, there's a scene here where he's not able to remember anything. And then the... He has these flashbacks where he's, you know, starting to remember certain things. He's starting to remember Captain America, but he has difficulty. So it's obviously symbolizing that he is under MK Ultra mind control. This is the govern, or this is the military application of this program. It's not only done on Hollywood entertainers. It's always, it's also done on military agents. The reason is so that they can create a perfect assassin. If you notice, Bourne can be triggered to kill and then triggered to not even remember what he did. So this is a MK Ultra Illuminati uh, mind controlled slave that is in the military trying or using that 
that program. Now here is something very interesting. You see this guy come up, uh, a representation of the government forces that are imposing the MK Ultra mind control program on this fellow. And he comes up and he says, wipe him clean and start over. So what, what does that mean, wipe him clean? It's obviously a reference to MK Ultra Mind Control. If you understand MK Ultra Mind Control, you know that one of the things that they will do is create trauma. It's trauma-based mind control. One of the techniques is in fact electroshock therapy. And you see him right after he says, wipe him out, like clear uh, and start over, wipe his memory, they start going through electroshock therapy. And it's no surprise that he's brought to a place of trauma that will then allow um, a disassociation in his mind to occur so that then they can program him. They can start over with the programming. And this is exactly what the MK Ultra program is all about, but they're hiding it right in plain sight. So here you have the Illuminati transhumanist MK Ultra mind control program for the military to create the satanic super soldier hidden in plain sight right in front of your face. What about a machine or device that can send thoughts? And what if you did not know they were using this machine and sending you messages? The technologies that are here now are scary. If they have a machine that can send thoughts then my first question is how do you defend yourself against that? Can I have a shield or a countermeasures machine? Who is in control of the machine? What thoughts are they sending? Is this a weapon where military psyops team can point the machine at the enemy and, by thoughts sent, tell the enemy to surrender? Or as one experienced in voice to Skull Eleanor White states, one especially invasive attack method in the arena of psychoelectronic mind control is voice to skull. Voice to skull is the transmission of voice, or any other audible or subliminal sound, directly into the hearing sense of the mind control victim. This is sometimes done around the clock and can be one of the severest forms of torture. Voice to skull technology is sometimes referred to as synthetic telepathy. Wow, that was an interesting topic to be honest. I never thought that we would be that far with our soldiers, with war, altogether, you know, everything. Let me know what you guys think about this one. I really want to hear from you guys. Um, that's about it for this one. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video. I hope so. You guys have a good one. Okay guys, that was our video. What did you think? Let us know. Don't forget to share the video and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We got more great content coming up soon. See you in the next video.